I've been wanting to make a Link cosplay since playing Breath of the Wild because I love all his outfits and armor and I feel like it's a costume I can continue to add to and iterate on over the years. So we're starting with the basic tunic look for this first version with some details from the champion's leathers. So let's get started. Hi! Whoa! Today I'm going to be working on my Link cosplay from Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I thought it would be really fun idea and a way to practice my sewing because making a tunic is sort of a very basic way to start learning how to sew. I am a beginner. I'm learning what I can from YouTube tutorials. I did purchase a pattern on Etsy for this. It's one of those where you have to print it out yourself from your printer and then tape all the squares together to form the pattern piece. What you see behind me is a practice that I did, a mock-up, obviously not in the final coloring, although, I don't know, this is kind of an interesting version of the tunic. I think the colors look kind of neat. But yeah, this is made out of a sheet that I had in college that's super cheap. And then the actual fabric I will be using for the tunic, there were just some scraps that I used to practice the heraldry. Uh, the applique. Yeah, I think it came together pretty well for my first time using my sewing machine. You know, it's a little, it's got some sloppy parts that I'm probably not honestly going to notice. Um, you know, it's not super even in the front here, but for most of the things that are wrong, I've kind of figured out what went wrong, so I'm hoping that it'll go better the second time. I didn't um, obviously do all of the applique detailing because I'm just wanting to practice and kind of get a sense for the technique. I think it looks pretty cool and I'm excited to make the real thing now. So far on the real thing, all I've done is cut out my pattern pieces. I bought this from Joann's. It's just a simple cotton um, turquoise and I've started to apply interfacing to the facing pieces which are words that I didn't know what they meant um, when I first read that on the pattern. So that was fun, but it's like this piece on the inside. You can kind of see on the back piece here. It's like it goes inside the collar so that you don't see the stitching on the collar. Although clearly, you know, I didn't do it perfectly because you can see the stitching, but I didn't use interfacing on this practice piece, so I'm kind of learning how to do that now, kind of, sort of, I don't know. And the next step is going to be doing like a zigzag stitch on some of these edges so that they don't fray. And then the applique on the final one is going to be done with this white muslin, 100% cotton for the details here. I had never done applique before this. On my Dorothea cosplay, I used heat transfer vinyl, so I was kind of familiar with an iron-on process, but applique is honestly a lot um, more forgiving because you can stick it onto the fabric before you iron it on, so you can really know exactly where everything's laying, which is nice. I would say sewing is very forgiving in general. Throughout making this, I kept having to rip out my stitches and redo it when I got something wrong. You know, it was my first time doing a sleeve and that went wrong multiple times in multiple ways, but it still kind of came together as a semi-coherent looking piece. So I do recommend learning how to sew because it's kind of a forgiving craft. I'd say the number one thing that I learned doing this mock-up is that the cutting process is perhaps the most important part. If your cut cuttings don't match the pattern, then it's going to mess up the whole thing and you can't undo cutting something, but you can undo most stitching. It's so great to see your skills develop and, you know, learn how to use new tools like the sewing machine. I didn't have a sewing machine when I did my Dorothea cosplay and it's very messy because of the hand stitching that I did. Um, it also took a really long time to do some very simple stitches. So I'm already really excited to be working with a sewing machine for this project. Yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. Let's get to it. After doing a zigzag stitch along the edges of every fabric piece, I started on the applique using this steam -a seam And all the heraldry details are already marked on the pattern for tracing and guiding the placement of things. So I'm tracing on the grid side of the steam -a seam Since the shapes are all straight edged, I found the best way to trace was making a mark at each corner and then connecting the dots. 
spots. This way it doesn't really matter if the paper shifts while I'm tracing, I already have all those corners marked in the proper spots. I cut out the shapes just enough so that they can be arranged on my fabric. I learned the hard way that you have to be careful when peeling off the paper. The sticky part needs to stay attached to your design or obviously it won't stick to the fabric. This is what you don't want. Now that the designs are stuck to the fabric, I cut them out as precisely as I can. This is my first sleeve with the design already adhered. I'll show you the process for the second sleeve. First I ironed the fabric with a crease to mark the center. But don't iron the crease as much as I did, that's how you end up with a permanent line on your sleeve. Oopsie! Then I spent a lot of time measuring the pattern and the fabric to place each shape in the right spot. Really, it was a combination of measuring and eyeballing. Again, until I iron it, I can stick and unstick it as much as I want, so I sure did. Next, I ironed it on with another piece of fabric in between to protect the sleeve. I pressed for, I think, 15 seconds at a time, whatever it said on the package, and obviously the video is sped up. So that's what I did for all the applique, and next I went and sewed along all the edges with white thread to give it a nice polished look. This was really good practice for being precise with a sewing machine and just getting used to it in general. At each corner I had to stop, walk the thread into place, and turn the fabric. I just finished the applique for Lynx tunic. I'm pretty happy with it. There is the world's tiniest stain on this and it's like in the worst spot. I feel like only I'm gonna notice it so I'm gonna keep going with it and I figure like I, I thought about redoing this piece because of the stain and because of another very small reason like um, pinholes um, but I don't think either are really that visible and Honestly, it's probably not going to be the only thing that bothers me when I finish this since I am a beginner. So I feel like if I'm going to, I might redo the tunic in the future anyway, if I gain more skills and want to redo it. So for now, I might as well just keep going with what I have. But yeah, next is going to be assembling these pieces. Apparently I did not film myself sewing it together, but it was quite the process, let me tell you. So I finished the tunic and it is too large on me. So that's one of the unfortunate things about buying a pattern is you never know for sure if it's gonna fit on your own body, I suppose. I tried to make this work, but it just wasn't working. Even when I was putting like the, the leather belts and stuff on it, it just falls off my shoulder too easily. So I'm gonna mess around, see if I can alter it, but as a beginner, I don't know, I don't have high hopes for that, especially since the applique is already on there. So I might be making another tunic that is smaller. Okay, so I kind of fixed it. I don't know, like it looks okay now. I didn't really know how to tailor this. I've never tailored anything, never taken in seams or whatever. But I just kind of winged it and watched a couple of YouTube videos. I don't know, like I was sort of like assuming I was gonna scrap this 
particular one anyways and then just make a brand new tunic so I'm like eh, I'll mess with it I'll see what I can do and I feel like it's fitting better than it did before I made the sleeves and the chest it's like just less baggy I kept the size of the bottom so that there's plenty of room there uh maybe I'll just use this I don't know I really can't explain to you what I did I just kind of sewed things at random you know the it, it's some pretty shoddy work. I mean, look at those shoulders. That's, that is rough. This one's slightly better, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Ta-da! Now that the main tunic is done, it was time to move on to some of the details from his Tears of the Kingdom look. So I literally use these in my kitchen cabinets um, as like a little liner surface to put the cups and stuff on. And I've heard that you can use it for cosplay to make chainmail. Oftentimes people use ones with bigger holes than this, but this is what I have on hand, so I decided I would just give it a try. I'm going to try to make it look sort of metallic and then attach it to the tunic somehow. I cut these cabinet liners to size and sprayed them down with Plasti Dip in a well-ventilated area. I think I did three coats. Then I used Rub and Buff to make it look metallic. I coated it somewhat unevenly to make it look more textured, I guess. This is actually starting to look like metal. That's pretty cool. This is it with just, I guess this is a good example of what it looks like just with the plastic dip on it and then with the metallic finish. That's so cool. I really like how this came out. While this dries, I'm going to start uh, trying to work with EVA foam. For the foam pieces, I tried following a tutorial by Kamui Cosplay. I love her channel and all her amazing costumes. So this is me covering my arm in plastic wrap to make a pattern for a bracer. Stripes and This might create a messy pattern. <laughs> and this is me realizing I made a big mistake because I'm not left-handed. Yeah, do this on your non dominant arm. Seriously, this is ridiculous. <laughs> my left arm is so useless. This is terrible. Oh my god. Yeah, this can give us a vague understanding of what we're doing, right? Oh my god, this issue. I'm definitely drawing on myself right now. This is terrible. Okay, and then elbow, right? Yeah, let's just make that nice and straight. I'm struggling! <laughs> this is so hard. This is a disaster, but I am starting to lose feeling in my hands, so I need to stop. <laughs> it's just attempt number one, it's fine. Free me, please, oh my god. Ah. <laughs> what is this? So I've been cleaning up the pattern a little bit. Um, since this is the one, the right arm is gonna be the Rauru arm, I decided to take off the part at the edge on the wrist or on the hand here. We're gonna see how it goes. This is my first try, so you know, we'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. Next, I traced my pattern onto EVA foam and cut it out along with all the details and a mirrored version for the left arm. I then used a heat gun to shape the foam and attached all the pieces with contact cement. Meanwhile, I attached the chainmail just with some loose stitching for now. I might work out something more clever eventually, but it works. Just finished attaching the chainmail. I think it came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. 
I also created the little eyelets for the ties. I'm gonna add those ties in. And next is just all the leather stuff, foam stuff. Pretty cool. I used more Plasti Dip as a primer and then applied acrylic paint and varnish. And then I hot glued a short zipper. Sadly, I accidentally bought a non-separating zipper, so it's a bit of a squeeze to get my arm in. But man, I can't believe that I made this. It looks awesome. I've always thought that bracers look really cool in general. Next, I did a similar process with the one shoulder piece. I made the pattern roughly by crinkling a piece of paper onto my shoulder. I'm making it in two halves that need to be cemented together. I was starting to run low on time before the convention, so no details on the shoulder piece this time time around. So Kineticon is in just a few days and so I picked up the last supplies today that I need for version one of my Tears of the Kingdom Lake cosplay. That's before he loses his arm. So this is the actual fake leather that I'm going to use for some of the pieces. This is a Master Sword color. I went back and forth between blue and purple. I decided on blue. I got some grommets. I'm going to learn how to use those. And a couple more colors for the master sword. Again, didn't quite have time to film the making of these two brown fabric pieces that sit at Link's waist and chest. They were very simple and imperfect. I just eyeballed a pattern using scrap fabric on my body and then transferred it to the fake leather and stitched it together. Once again, I used Plasti Dip, acrylic paint, and then varnish on the shoulder armor after it was cemented together. I also added another piece underneath to give it a nice shape. Next, I planned out where to attach straps on the shoulder pad and planned where the grommets will go for that, the little metal rings. I hot glued the strap to the shoulder piece. The strap material was literally something I had lying around at home. I have no idea where it came from. Next, I hammered in those grommets. And then added Velcro so that I can get this thing on and adjust it easily to sit just right. Finally, the ties for the front and we're good to go. So I believe I'm experiencing what the workaholics of the world would call burnout. When working on the costume, I was enjoying it so much and spending so much time on it. Then I started to get really frustrated really fast to the point where like I was super unmotivated and like hated everything I made all of a sudden. I have a master sword and I can't bring it to the convention so I really wanted to have that part of the costume and so I was trying to make a fake hilt for the master sword that I could put in the scabbard and bring to the convention but I that was just biting off more than I could chew because I had not done any research on how to do prop work. I did not have the right kind of foam or the right kind of tools to do that and it just ends up looking absolutely terrible. That's around when the burnout kicked in and the oh my god this is just not going well but it was and I now feel like you know I'm pretty proud of what I've created even if it's not perfect. It's hard being a beginner at any craft because there's so much upfront investment, uh, lots of equipment that you need to get. I've kept, I made so many trips to Joann's to buy like stuff that I just didn't have, like a hot glue gun, like a heat gun. I'd never worked with EVA foam before, you know, and it was really, really fun. I learned a lot, but it also reminds me that it's hard being a beginner and it's okay for it to be hard and uh, for it not to go perfectly at first. But yeah, I decided today I'm just going to enjoy a walk in the woods, not worry about the cosplay. The convention is tomorrow, so the cosplay just kind of is what it is at this point. I'm pretty happy with how it came out and I'm excited to debut version one of this cosplay that I'm going to be doing a lot of iterations of. And yeah, here is the completed cosplay.